What's up? I'm Brennan Real, owner of Legacy Grip and Local Lady Key Grip. And I'm here today because we're gonna go through the entire vehicle rigging process. If you don't have an arm car, no problem. You can rig up a black arm on a vehicle. We've got my pickup here today. We're gonna rig it up and we're gonna go through what I look for when I'm first checking out a vehicle, how you account for adjustability needs for a rig, how you actually do the rig, and then talk about any safety needs after the rig has been done. So it's gonna be a lot of content. We're gonna go through my whole process. Let's hop into it. All right, first step in the process, scoping out your vehicle. When I come up to a vehicle, I'm looking at a number of things. The first one being, uh, are we gonna do a hard mount under the, under the, uh, the vehicle or are we gonna do suction cup rigs? And it's kind of figuring out what your points are gonna be. So I'm looking around the vehicle, seeing if there are flat body panels and where suctions could fit. You know, you could do a suction here. You can't do a suction here on this fender because the whole thing is curved, so that wouldn't work, right? Looking on the inside of the bed here, we can clamp to this. This is a nice little lip on the inside, so that could work. And then, uh, you know, this truck has a trailer hitch, which will be perfect for the black arm. Uh, in the back at least for pulling because we could just slide the trailer hitch adapter right in there and you have your point for your vertical speed rail. Uh, sometimes I'll climb under the vehicle and see if we can mount to the frame or if the frame has holes so that we can put a bolt through and put a speed rail starter on it and then send speed rail out the side or the back of the car and then rig off of that. So when I first look at the vehicle, I'm just checking out the different rigging options that are available so that I can then make an informed decision about how we want to build this rig based on where the camera needs to go. All right, we've scoped out our vehicle. We kind of have an idea of how we want to do the rig, right? Or what options are possible for doing the rig. And we're going to now set our camera position. So this process works the absolute best when you could do it with the DP. You don't wanna be guessing on camera position. You wanna actually get the DP over here so you can talk about what would work, what can't work. And I find it super helpful to actually be using Artemis on your phone. Or if you have a small camera, you can bring your small camera over and actually frame it up with your camera, right? But Artemis is such a convenient solution. So the DP will usually pull up Artemis and then start taking a look at what will work so things for like traditional hood mounts or hostess trays, we will actually just frame up on the window or the hood and see uh, what will look good because, uh, you know, we can make a guess and then you rig up and you do all this work, right? And then the camera actually wants to be a little bit lower, a little bit further back. There's, there's always something, right? So if you load up your camera specs and lens onto Artemis and actually look at it with the, uh, in the proper configuration of how you're going to be shooting that you can make an informed decision again on where the camera position actually needs to be and what we'll do is we'll pull measurements so if the dp is wanting the camera to be right here i'll pull a measurement off of the vehicle as well so let's say he wants it to be three feet off the vehicle right and then four feet five inches off the vehicle i'll sometimes get a stand as well like a a short C-stand and I'll put a tennis ball on it and I'll set that right where the camera wants to be. And we could build this whole rig off of the vehicle and get it exactly where the DP had their phone. And so you're not like doing any guesswork, right? We want to be super precise because when they come back and they're ready, usually you don't have a lot of time, right? They want to throw the camera on, do the shot. You don't want to be messing around and re-rigging everything. Like it's not efficient, you know? So, so getting the DP over here and going through the shot with him or her is absolutely essential in my book and sets you up for success with the uh, actual rig when the camera comes over and you're ready to shoot it. Some vehicles can be straightforward to rig and others require a bit of ingenuity. So when you're doing a rig, you wanna think about, am I doing a black arm? Maybe a trailer hitch would, would work. And so you get a truck with a trailer hitch, right? But you don't always need to use one of those. It just depends on your skill level and experience and what you're comfortable doing and the gear that you have available. So with this one, I'm using my pickup truck. It has a hitch mount. We're gonna base the black arm rig off of that hitch mount. We'll throw a trailer hitch adapter in there and then we'll tag it with some other things. So uh, for this black arm rig specifically, after I've scoped out the vehicle, I know that 
it has a trailer hitch. We're going to do that for the vertical pipe, and then we're going to tag it to the uh, to the inside of the bed here with clamps so that we can triangulate the vertical post. And that's what I know is going to work for this. I don't think we need to use suction cups. Suction cups are would be a, a good option if we needed to use them. We do have flat surfaces here on the, the back of the gate and on the side as well. But I think that this will give us a, a better uh, a better bite for that triangulation. So what if you don't have a vehicle with a tow hitch and you want to do a black arm rig? Well, it's not the end of the world. It definitely makes it easier if you have a trailer hitch adapter, but let's say you were rigging to a vehicle that looked like this, right? The Hyundai Elantra, no trailer hitch. Okay, it's not a problem, right? It just requires a little bit more work so I'd base this rig probably off of suctions and I'd actually come down here and I'd look under the vehicle and see if there was anything I could rig to under here and just first look without having to pull any, any panels off or the bumper or anything like that. Doesn't look like there's any points under here. So I'd probably base this rig off of some suction cups. Um, and so that, you know, the, the scoping out your vehicle is informed you about what's possible and what's not, but you don't absolutely need to have a trailer hitch in order to do this rig. You can use any car. There's a few different attachment methods we use for, uh, for throwing rigs on vehicles. One of them is suction cups. So we use a variety. This is a 10 inch, this is a six inch. We also have four and a half inch. And then we have three inches as well. And three inches, we don't use them for any structural support or anything, but they're kind of cute little guys. We use ratchet straps as another method of attachment. So we have both endless and we have hooked. And so when I talk about doing a hard mount under the vehicle and ratchet strapping something, sometimes we'll actually ratchet pipe uh, or some type of, uh, you know, something to rig off to the frame of the underbody of the vehicle. And we'll use ratchets for that. If there's no option for throwing in a bolt through the frame to a speed rail starter, like we'll literally just ratchet it. And ratchets are great because they can help secure your suction cups as well, which is super essential. If you're using suctions, the first attachment option, you always want to do a redundant ratchet strap on it to make sure it doesn't fall off. So we have ratchets and then we have hard mounts. And I was talking about throwing a hard mount into the bed of my pickup there. And what we're going to do is we're going to use these unibody clamps. It's all about the tools that you have in your arsenal. You know, this is why the grips carry so much stuff. It's because we come across all different types of scenarios, in which case you need to use a different piece of equipment and you got to have it, right? Maybe you don't need it on one job, but you might need it on another job, especially when the vehicles are always different. Hard mounts. We're going to use this unibody clamp. There are other hard mount options as well. We can, like I said before, throw a bolt through the frame and use a speed rail starter, which will give us a great starting point to throw a pipe under the car, which is, in my opinion, one of the best mounting options if you have the clearance under the car to make sure that everything is, is secured and strong and you're not gonna get any sort of wiggle or anything. So a couple of attachment point options. We have suction cups, we have ratchet straps, and then we have hard mounts. Let's jump into the build. Okay, let's hop into building this black arm rig. We got DJ here. He's one of my grips. He's gonna be helping me out. We got all the gear over here, my rigging car. We got a bolt kit, trailer hitch adapter from Modern Studio. We've got a socket kit. We have some speed rail. We got the black arm. We're ready to rock. So we know we're going to rig off of the trailer hitch. So let's start with that. Let's get the trailer hitch adapter in there. And something funny about these new cars is I noticed this, uh, this pin that is up here. This usually comes with the trailer hitch. I've noticed that this pin actually doesn't go all the way through. It's like too tight. So what we'll do is we'll just get rid of this pin and we'll just throw a bolt through this and tighten it. And that'll be, that'll be the same thing as the pin, right? So it's that sort of quick thinking and like, and problem solving that's so important with ripping, which is again, why you need to have a lot of tools like in your arsenal. So we'll throw this in. We're gonna line up the holes. Yeah, there we go. And then is this long enough? And then we'll need some washers too, DJ. Yeah, this one's too long, so we need an in-between. And then a lot of it's just trial and error, you know, seeing what's gonna work, what's not. Because 
you know, every every vehicle's different. Like, you know, what's worse to rig is Teslas because they're just smooth underneath and they're all plastic. I look, give me a classic car any day of the week. Let's see if this will work. This one's also a little bit too long. Let's try maybe this one, yeah. And then we need some washers too. Yeah, that one will be good. And then if we have like somewhat big washers or something, I think this, this should be good. Throw one of these bad boys on. Go through it. Yeah, that'll be good. And then we'll throw a nut on this side and we'll just tighten it up, DJ. This thing's great because it gives you a lot of options and it has mounting points anywhere. So, I mean, this is like almost like a cheat, you know? Uh, like if if we didn't want to rig off the trailer hitch, like we didn't have to, but this just gives you such a great starting point. So I've oriented so that our vertical pipe will be here at the end because this one sticks up. You can also turn this, those holes for the trailer hitch pin are on four sides. So you can actually turn this whole thing in which case this would give you uh, a sideways um, point for the speed rail on the end. But I mean, you have a sideways here as well. It also shoots speed rail out. And then you have one closer to the vehicle as well as underneath uh, in both far and near configuration. So this thing is really versatile. Um, okay, so this is on there and it's rigged up and it's tight. Let's pop our vertical pipe in here. Go like this, make sure you have your trusty speed wrench. It's 3 16 essential carry for a grip. I'm gonna throw this in here. It's just flush with the bottom. There we go, and then we'll throw the black arm on, we're done. Just kidding, we need to triangulate. This thing is way too wobbly, it's not gonna work. So triangulation is something that you'll hear Grips talking about a lot, right? It is it is essentially making triangles, which are strong forms of connection to make sure that you get rid of all your jiggle and wiggle and anything that could ruin the shot. So what we're gonna do is we're going to tag this pipe from the top here to the left and right sides of the bed. So we will start by setting our points in the bed and then attaching our extra pipes here with some Hollander fittings. So let's pull a measurement and let's see where this six footer wants to live. So if we're up here, the six foot wants to be about here, which gives us good information. So what I'll do is I'll just leave my tape measure here just as a reference point and I'll start rigging these unibody clamps. So yeah, two unibodies. I don't want to scratch up my bed, so I have some duvet, and then we'll get the right socket adapter for this as well. I think it'll be seven sixteenths. No, it'll be nine sixteenths. Can't see it up here. There we go, nine sixteenths. We'll get all the bits and bits and pieces out for the ratchet. This will just make it go a lot faster than just doing a C wrench on it. And then do you want to grab another one? And we'll start on this side. Put this here. Throw this on. Just get it all set up. So this is a unibody clamp and it's it works uh, by pinching onto something. So you could pinch this onto the frame of the underbody and it'll work perfectly here because it'll pinch here. And then what you do is you throw a grenade on this thread here and it uh, creates a, a mounting point for speed rail to then use Hollanders as well. So I'm gonna size out some doobie here. Looks like it would be good. And then DJ, do you have your, uh, do you have your knife? Yeah. You can only de tear doobie one way, so just cut me right there. There we go, let's get started. And then we know we're gonna be using this on the other side, so let's just cut another piece of doobie as well. There you go. And then this could fly away. 
let's set this point. So this was my marker, this tape measure. So I'm actually gonna rig it a little bit in front of it. Go like this. We're gonna loosen it up. It's on there and then we're gonna tighten it. It's one point done. We'll get a speed rail starter for this and we'll throw it on. And then we'll actually pull a measurement from the back of the bed here to the start of the unibody clamp. So this is 27 inches and three quarter. And this will allow us to rig that in exactly the same spot on the other side. And then do you have that other unibody? There we go. Twenty-seven and three quarters would get us right where this little blemish is. I'll set this here again as a reference. This is ready to go and loose. Slide this on again and we tighten. Just get it hand tight first and then we'll come in with the ratchet. Nice. Take that away. We'll put the speed rail starter on that one as well. And we'll dig out some Hollander fittings. These need to swivel, so we're gonna grab two short barrel crosses and we're gonna grab two swivel tees as well, which are down here. Short barrel cross, swivel tee. They go on nicely, right? And then you have a you have a swivel point and you can configure your pipe however you want. So DJ, I'm gonna throw this one on, and then why don't you throw one on the top of the pipe up there, and we'll just do one side at a time. Let me grab this pipe. There you go, and then twist it uh, clockwise, the, uh, the swivel tee on the pipe, on the vertical pipe. So just twist the uh, the swivel tee because this needs to be configured so that, there you go. And then you may need to loosen those if they're hard to, hard to get on there. They might just be biting on the pipe. So we'll throw that on and let's see if we lined up our, our measurements correctly here. We throw this on, we're gonna throw this on and then this will come on as well. And I just need to loosen this a little bit. So let me get my speed wrench out. There we go. And yeah, you can go all the way to the, why don't you drop it down? Cause we'll do the top. So drop it down on the vertical. There you go, keep going. Keep going, keep going. Uh, go back up a little. Yeah, let's, let's go right there. So that's not, not too bad. We weren't too far off. Actually, I think we were pretty close. I slid it down that vertical because I want to give us room over there for the other side up top. All right, just making sure everything's tight. Very nice, not quite secure. If you shake it, you can see it's still wobbly. Let's uh, let's rig the other pipe. So 
So go in here, thank you. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna match what we did on the other side. So I oriented the Hollanders in a certain way over there. I'm gonna make sure I do it over here. I mean, we want things to look good, you know, so. You good? Yep. You have the same stick out as the other side? Yeah, okay, tighten it. Tightening everything. There we go. And we've essentially built our rig. We've triangulated the vertical and look at this thing. I mean, it's not moving around. And what's so great about the black arm is it's a stabilization arm. So if you have a little movement in this, it's not gonna ruin the shot, like you'll be fine. Whereas with maybe a hood mount or a hostess tray, if you have some movement, you're gonna see that shake translated to your shot. With something like a black arm, that's the whole purpose, it's gonna take out the shake. So um, this looks good to me. Let's throw the black arm on. All right, flow sandy black arm. This thing's such a great tool. So what it has is it has these speed rail adapters over here and they just flip open, All right? So I'll just loosely throw it on here. This goes on here and then we're gonna need to find the right wrench for this DJ. I think it's in there. I think it's in the, uh, the case right there. Just use the ratchet though. And then before you tighten it too much, come on, loosen it. <laughs> we want to raise it up. We want to raise it up. There you go. So we could tighten that. And then we want to make sure it's centered. There you go. You can keep tightening that. Yeah, I mean, just configuring this black arm could be a whole video in itself. But, uh, you know, what we would do is we would put a remote head on this, something like a Ronin, and we would be able to remotely operate this and we get this really cool shot uh, in front of the car or you could do like side of the car stuff. And this will give you some really dynamic uh, movement and stuff uh, as well. So, uh, we can lower this and get like a scraping the ground type of shot, or you can go even higher with this vertical pipe and get like, like a, an aerial view on the remote head as well. So black arms on, okay, this is all Titan. Yeah, this isn't configured, uh, but essentially this rig is built, right? And how long did that take? That was super quick. And this is only one method of doing it. Like I said, you could work off of suctions. If you didn't have a trailer hitch, you could, uh, build some sort of other base solution, like if you're rigging off the Hyundai Elantra, right? Trailer hitch definitely gives you the easiest route to completion though. Um, okay, so this is all built, it's looking good. So if I was to do anything different on this build, the only thing I could think of doing is maybe throwing some ratchets on the trailer hitch down here, because with that bolt, it does introduce a little side to side but it's really not that bad actually if like, if I'm cranking on this, but I would do a ratchet maybe from here to over here under the vehicle. And then I'd do the same on the other side. And so that would, we'd have a, a, a force pulling on the left and maybe a force pulling on the right. And there's no way for this trailer hitch to go left or right, which is the only uh, form of movement that we get out of this rig. So that would probably just um, 
you know, uh, secure it a little bit better. I mean, this is safe, right? So everything, everything here is safe and you're gonna get a great shot. So, so yeah, that's how we rig a black arm onto a vehicle for a DIY camera solution. Let's talk about adjustability a little bit. And adjustability is so important for me when it comes to rigging, uh, whether it be vehicles or any sort of overhead rigging as well, but especially with vehicles. So the adjustability is kind of built in with this rig, right? We've actually rigged up this vertical pipe and it allows you to slide the black arm up and down here so that you can reach uh, you know, different, different heights with, the, with your head and your camera. So the adjustability is kind of built into this. That's why I went with something like a six foot pipe, because if you want to raise this up, then you can get the camera uh, about chest height, right? And if you want to go low and scrape the ground, you could just slide the black arm down in this pipe and then be really low to the ground, scraping the ground with the camera, which would be really cool. That would give you a really uh, visceral shot and it seemed like things would be moving really fast. So, um, you know, adjustability, if, if I was doing a different rig apart from the black arm, I would introduce adjustability in different ways. So if you check out the blog actually, which is supplemental to this video, uh, I highly recommend you check it out. It has some photo examples of some rigs I've done in the past where I talk about adjustability more in detail. But what I'll do is say for for uh, a, shot, a shot of the tire, the front uh, tire of a vehicle. What I've done is I'll actually work off the same system here with a vertical mount and I build a base on the side of the vehicle out of either Modulus X truss or speed rail. And I will build the whole system based off this vertical mount where you can slide the camera up and down. You can rotate it on a cheese plate on that vertical post. So that gives you two options of adjustability there and then I was on a shoot once for a Hummer commercial and the DP wanted to do the front tire shot. And then he also wanted to spin it around to do the back tire shot. And he wanted to be closer. So, I mean, there's a big span between the front and the back tire. You can't just plop the camera in the middle and then twist it when you want to do the front and the back. So what I did is I actually built this uh, system that was it was based off of that spanned uh, a good distance. And what I was able to do was actually slide that vertical pipe up and down the vehicle so that when I got the front tire shot, we were able to be up there close to the front tire. We were able to undo the suctions on top or for the triangulation for the vertical pipe, slide that down to the back tire, flip the camera around, set those suctions on top of the vehicle again, and we were able to get the back tire shot, which was something that we didn't think we were gonna be able to do because of time constraints. But if you're thinking about that type of adjustability when you're building these rigs, then that sets you up for success and probably uh, getting you hired back again, right? So super important, adjustability. We all know things also change on the day. You could do your very best framing things up with Artemis, with the DP, and you throw the camera on, and it's not quite right, right? The, maybe the director wants to move the talent from the driver's seat over to the passenger seat, and you gotta slide the camera left. Well, you know, maybe you wanna think about that when you're think, uh, building the rig or, or planning your, your rigging points and stuff, because what you could then do is introduce a hood mount system with a slider, uh, a hood mount slider, where you could slide that on the rails left and right. So that'll give you the left and right. Sometimes if I know I'm gonna need more adjustability, I'll throw a cheese plate on the hostess tray, in which case I can get further back. The hostess tray has built-in adjustability, allows you to go up and down and then left and right a little bit. So that's always good. Um, so adjustability is so important. Little things change. You're gonna have to shift the camera. It inevitably happens. So be thinking about adjustability when you're building your rigs. So this is all rigged up. Let's talk about safety. Safety is so important. There's a number of things that you want to check for before this goes out and then after it comes back from being filmed as well. And what I'm thinking about here is whether or not these unibody clamps will slide. I mean, these are just pinch clamps and as a sole point for this triangulation, it would worry me, at least in the back of my mind, if I'm thinking about worst case scenarios, that these slide, in which case the vertical pipe would also move. So if I was to do anything different on this, I would attach a suction right here and a suction on the other side, and I would just triangulate to these two pipes again, which does two things. It makes it so that these unibody clamps can't slide, 
and it also adds further stability for this uh, for this rig as well. If we're talking about camera safety, what I would do here is once the remote head goes on and you have the camera on, I'd safety the remote head to make sure that it doesn't fall off. Or if it did become loose or fall off, it would just hang off of the black arm here, right? Uh, same thing with the camera, make sure that doesn't fall off. So you send this out, everything's safe here initially, it comes back, you wanna check everything, make sure nothing came loose. So I'm checking all of the grub nuts, I'm shaking the rig, I'm making sure these unibody pinch clamps are tight still and haven't come loose. <laughs> and I'm checking the, uh, the trailer hitch to make sure that hasn't come loose. Uh, because when you're on the road, you have these micro vibrations from the pavement, you can go over bumps, stuff comes loose, right? It happens, it doesn't mean you've done a bad rig, it just means that you need to go over everything again and make sure everything's tight. Um, you don't want something falling off and maybe hitting a, a random car or damaging your picture vehicle uh, or, or anything like that. That just would be recipe for disaster. So in terms of other safety, something I want to think about is also whether the uh, driver's vision is, uh, has been impeded, right? So if we're doing something like a hood mount and we've rigged the camera right in front of the driver, how is he or she going to drive, right? They can't see the road. And when you're thinking about how to rig up the camera in these positions, that's something that you want to think about while you're rigging. You don't want to have it rigged up and then they start to drive off and they're like, well, I can't see where I'm going. Well, that's, that's an issue, right? And that presents a, a, a safety concern. And so you may need to make adjustments to the rig when you're talking with the DP about camera placement to make sure that that issue doesn't arise after it's been rigged up, right? So uh, there's a few ways to go about that. You could either work with a biscuit rig, in which case the actor is actually not driving the vehicle, the driver is on top. That's a whole setup, it's more advanced, right? Uh, or you could work with police to make sure that the actor is driving down a closed street or with a police escort to make sure that you can mitigate any sort of outside problems with people who aren't a part of the shoot. I mean, traffic in LA specifically is super crazy and there's wild drivers all the time. So you just wanna make sure that the uh, vision of the driver uh, is not blocked or anything like that. Um, also, you know, if the rig sticks out from the vehicle, you wanna make sure that the driver's aware of that, right? Hey, like, should be obvious, right? But you've got a camera hanging off three feet of the left of the car here, right? Make sure you don't come close to anything on the left side of the car, right? Whether that be the back or, or front or anything like that. So uh, super, super important safety, right? If, if you've got to take an extra few minutes to make sure things are safe, especially when they come back, people pressure you, right? You're in the heat of the shoot and they want to go out and shoot again. Look, it happens. I've been there. You got to make sure you take your time and make sure everything's safe. So this rig is safe. It's good to go. And, uh, you know, no rig is ever complete without the slap of approval saying this bad boy is good to go. Let's send it out. We've gone over a lot here. We've talked about scoping out your vehicle and what I look for when I first approach a vehicle for a rig. We've gone over uh, checking out your rigging options, where to place the camera. We talked about adjustability needs and how important that is. We've actually built this DIY solution uh, that could be used instead of using an arm car for a lower budget solution. And then we've talked about all things safety and what to look for when this rig comes back and uh, how to make sure that your actor can clearly see their driving path as well. So we've covered a lot. We hope you had a lot of fun. Be sure to check out the blog post, which has supplemental images for everything we talked about. And uh, happy rigging.